Hello and welcome to the 5 Minute Film Club and today's film sees us hanging out with Frank Sinatra, Rita Hayworth and Kim Novak down at a little place called Shea Joey's. Pal Joey is a 1957 musical with Frank Sinatra playing a down and out, good for nothing nightclub compare called Joey Evans who, after an altercation with the police, finds himself scouting for some new work. He stumbles into a bar and discovers, for the first time maybe, real feelings of love for a young, naive chorus girl called Linda, played by Kim Novak. However, a former flame, the influential and widowed Vera Prentice Simpson, played wonderfully by Rita Hayworth, has got the money to give Joey what he wants, and that is a right classy club of his own that he wants to call Shea Joey's. Avec, uh, vous... All this is a recipe for jealousy, with the two women now competing for Joey's affection. Pal Joey has a winning combination, I think, of a great cast with Frank Sinatra in a role he was born to play. There are some great songs that are now classics like Bewitched, Bothered and Bewildered and The Lady is a Tramp. It also has a script that moves along at a great pace and delivers some fun dialogue for all the characters. The film is based on a Rogers and Hart musical that was a Broadway hit in 1940 and starred Gene Kelly as the lead. Eventually it would end up as it is here with various different rewrites and also songs taken from other sources. For example, they decided that Vera couldn't be having an affair with Joey. No, no, the Hollywood censors at the time would definitely put a stop to that. Instead, she was made into an older widow. What I find quite funny about that is the fact that Rita Hayworth in 1957 was 39 and Frank Sinatra was 42. However, Frank Sinatra did insist that Rita Hayworth take the top billing as at the time I think he knew that Rita Hayworth's career as a leading lady probably didn't have long to go. Rita Hayworth had been a top pin-up in the 1940s, but around the time that pal Joey was filming, her private life was spinning out of control and ending up mainly in the tabloids. She was married to husband number five and was still, I'm sure, emotionally troubled by her fourth husband, who was violent and had physically lashed out at her in public. Through no fault of her own, her career really wouldn't recover. It's a far cry from when I last reviewed her in You Were Never Lovelier. Part of what makes Powell Joey work, and I think definitely makes Joey a likeable character, a firm distinction from his Broadway anti-hero status, is down to the wonderful work of Dorothy Kingsley, who wrote the screenplay. Kingsley had a great career, starting life as a joke writer for all the big radio comics of the day, including Jack Benny. She had a great ear for comic timing and its evidence is all over Pal Joey. No matter how big the roles are in Pal Joey, everybody gets some killer lines. In fact, Sinatra was so happy with Kingsley's work on Pal Joey that he signed up to his next feature, Can Can, without even reading the script, just because she'd written it. Having someone like Kingsley writing this film also means that the two female leads get equal status with believable dialogue and also some character development. Both actors give everything to their roles in this film and I think it's a testament to its success. Aside from the wonderful script by Dorothy Kingsley, I think the film actually looks fantastic. George Sidney was a very proficient musical film director, having directed the famous sequence where Gene Kelly dances with an animated mouse in Anchors Away. With all that considered, Pal Joey is a lot smaller on scale. The action is set all in the nightclub. There are no huge dance numbers or massive colourful sets. There is a reality to this film, and it only strays into fantasy once for its final number. Joey's life is breaking down, and we can see his inner problems filmed through a broken glass. Not particularly subtle, I grant you. I think this is Sydney's attempt to keep this film grounded at all times while also getting in some of that old Hollywood musical flair. It has a typical 1950s palette that when colour is introduced, like the pink piano for the Lady is a Tramp number, makes the scene really pop. Also, that song and Sinatra's performance of it is perfect. Many people over the years have tried to repeat what Frank Sinatra does with that song here, but none of them manage it. As with all the best of Frank Sinatra's performances, it is understated and relaxed. 
I really enjoyed Pal Joey and it was really nice to look into the making of this film and to discover people like Dorothy Kingsley. But always, let me know your thoughts about the film. Next week I'll be pivoting 360 degrees and looking at the 1984 film The Killing Fields. Go ahead, watch it, come back next Friday and we can discuss it. But until then, thank you very much and goodbye.